Hi students, here we are at the combined gas law. So we're going to put together Boyle's, Charles, and Guy Lussac's laws uh, for pressure, temperature, and volume all together. And what we will see is that we have quite a large equation here. So we've got all of the P's and V's in the top, and we have the T's in the bottom. So you'll notice that it's a combination of Boyle's Law, which was P1 V1 equals P2 V2, and the other two laws that had temperature in the bottom. And this is good because temperature stays in the bottom. And I just want you to remember that we need to do all of our temperatures in Kelvin so that our answer turns out right because we all wanna get points for the right answer, right? Right. Okay, so again, if you are a little bit lazy about algebra, you guys can just look down here and I have solved the equations for you. And you can see we've got a lot going on there. So in this section, you might wanna use those. And let's get right to our problems. So Rhonda's helium balloon has a volume of two liters at two ATM and 395 Kelvin. And it says if the temperature is raised to 500 Kelvin and the gas is compressed to one liter, what's the new pressure? So before we do any calculations, just look. The volume in the balloon is two liters and you're compressing it to one liter. So what do you think is gonna happen with the pressure there if you're compressing your gas? Yeah, you're gonna have more pressure there. And you're also taking the temperature from 395 to 500. So what does that do to the pressure? That increases it too. So we've got two things that we're doing here that are increasing pressure. So let's see if we go from two ATM to a number that's greater than that, because that would make sense. Okay, so what we have here is we have volume because liters is a unit of volume and two ATM that's a pressure ATM is a unit of pressure and 395 Kelvin that's a temperature and then it says that we raise the temperature to 500 Kelvin so we've got another temperature there and if we've got two of them we've got to have T1 and T2 the gas is compressed to one liter. So is that a V, a P, or a T? That's a V, that's a volume. So if we have two volumes, we've gotta have a V1 and a V2. And then it says, what is So again, if we've got two variables, we've gotta have a one and a two. Again, you'll also want to keep the sets together. So two liters goes with two ATM and 395, and we don't want to mix those up because it'll give us the wrong answer. And that's no good because we don't get any points for a wrong answer. And when we have V's, P's, and T's, we want to go ahead and write out our equation so we can keep all these variables straight. And remember, that you have your T's in the bottom. And that will allow you to just go ahead and fill the other variables in on the top. And then you can list your variables out and solve your equation. Okay, so to organize our thought, we're, thoughts, we're gonna do P1, V1, and T1. And our first pressure is what? It is 2 ATM. And our first volume is 2 liters. And our first temperature is 395 Kelvin. Our P2, V2, and T2. P2, what is that? We don't know, we're looking for that. So we get a question mark there. And then V2 is one liter and T2 is 500 Kelvin. 
Okie dokie, we're looking for P2. So what we need to do is we need to scoot T2 up there and we need to take V2 and put it down there with T1. Remembering that things can move diagonally across the equal sign all day long and that's legal. So that would give us P1, V1, T2, because we moved T2 up there, and then T1 and V2 on the bottom, and that's going to equal P2. And most people like to put the variable they're solving for on the left-hand side, so just switch those around. You can do that. That's legal, too. So we'll go ahead and say P2 is equal to, and we'll go ahead and plug and chug. So our first variable is P1, and that is right there. So we have two ATM. And we're multiplying that by V1, which is two liters. And then we're multiplying that by T2. And your brain's gonna wanna do P1, V1, T1. Don't let it, make sure you get T2 in there. T2 is what? It's 500 Kelvin. And we're going to divide that by T1 and V2. And T1 is 395 Kelvin. And V2 is 1 liter. All right, what cancels out? We can see one right away. The liter's there. And we got the Kelvin canceling out. And we're left with ATM, which is a good sign because we're solving for pressure. And ATM is a pressure unit, so that makes sense so far. And then we go ahead and we do the calculation with our calculator, and we find that we have 5.06 ATM for our P2. And we've got three sig figs there, and our answer makes sense because we increased the pressure from two ATM to about five ATM. And we said that we are expecting the pressure to increase because we compressed the gas. We went from two liters to one liters, one liter. And we increased the temperature from 395 to 500 Kelvin, which also should increase the pressure. So yay, that makes sense. All right. So Ryan ate a taco smell last night. He now has gas and it takes up 1.29 liters of bowel space and he is in pain. He has taken some gas X and right now he's just waiting for it to work. And it's under 2.35 ATM of pressure at 310 Kelvin. And this is body temperature in Kelvin. And we want to know what will the volume of Ryan's gas be after he expels it if the atmospheric temperature and pressure are 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 ATM. All right, let's do it to it. Let's go ahead and list our variables so we can organize our thoughts. So the first pressure, what's our first pressure? Well, it's not 1.29 liters because liters is a unit of what? Of volume. Is it 2.35 ATM? Yep, ATM is a unit of pressure. So we have 2.35 ATM and our first volume, we just said it is 1.29 liters. And our first temperature is 310 Kelvin. And our second pressure is atmospheric temperature, which is 1 atm. And the second volume, we don't know. We're wondering. After that gas comes out of Ryan, what's the volume of it? And T2 is what? 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so... At this point, you guys are familiar with how to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and then Kelvin. So we'll just go ahead and get to the answer there. And I'll let you guys go ahead and do the calculations for yourself and 
check my math there. And now we need to solve for V2. So we've got this equation up here again. And we've got to move T2 up here. And we've got to move P2 down there to get V2 by itself. So that would give us P1, V1, T2, divided by T1, P2 is equal to V2. Okay, so plug and chug time. What we've got is that V2 is equal to P1, so we've got 2.35 ATM multiplied by V1, which is 1.29 liters, multiplied by what? 297 Kelvin. It's T2, not T1. And again, your brain's going to want to do that. That's totally normal. So we have 297 Kelvin here. And we divide that by T1, which is 310 Kelvin. And we multiply that by P2, which is 1 ATM. And at this point, we're going to cancel out our units. And we can see that we're going to cancel out Kelvin and what else? An ATM, and we're left with units of liters, which makes sense because we're solving for a volume, and liters is a unit of volume. And when we do the calculation, what we'll find is that V2 is 2.9 liters. So that is a lot of gas. So two liters is one of those big soda bottles that you buy at the grocery store. So this is almost three liters of gas uh, that Ryan had in there from his bean burritos. So that must have been pretty painful, Ryan. He's glad now. Now notice you guys I did two sig figs and the reason is because 310, we don't know if that zero on the end is significant or not. So we have to go with it's not significant. If I wanted it to be significant, I'd have to write it in scientific notation or put what to the right of the zero. Put a decimal point right there. But the decimal point wasn't there, so we went with two sig figs. Okay, so that's a lot of variables to keep track of. So go ahead and list them out and take your time with these problems. And in the next video, we'll go on to Avogadro's Law. So we're going to have another variable. Aren't you excited? Woohoo!